everybody and welcome back to another episode of first and last my name is josh and this week i have joe hey man and jimmy what is it that is up dogs nothing much my digitally uh i couldn't i didn't know what Did you have what d word i could use for like pasta it didn't work uh digatoni my digital DiGiorno dude. <laughs> DiGiorno is, what is that? You came I mean, with. it's not pasta, but it's a pizza. Uh, That's love close. It. Love it. Um. So yeah, welcome to first and last, the only podcast. Uh, the like only podcast. <laughs> the only <laughs> podcast. We're the only ones left. We're the only podcast <laughs> in existence. The only survivors. <laughs> Joe, how do people? Uh, what? What's my question? <laughs> How what do I ask line? you every time? Line, please. Who? Line? <laughs> Who? This is going swimmingly. We're doing great. This Quarantine is our first is, podcast. I haven't talked to people in a while, guys. Baby's um, first episode. Joe, for people that haven't seen this show ever, what is First and Last the podcast about? Uh, we take a TV show and watch only the first and only the last episode. Nothing in between. And that's how we absorb TV shows now, because we're apparently too busy to watch whole TV shows. <laughs> and got a lot how? going on. <laughs> right. Nobody got time for that. <laughs> uh, speaking of watching whole TV shows, has there been any like ep- TV or especially movies that you guys have been like, well, I'm stuck inside. I might as well watch this movie now. Mm, mm. Yes. <laughs> so I have like felt the need to watch so many things. But we've, I've made uh, my wife watch The Matrix because she'd never seen it. Oh, the wow. mate, the mate, that's a classic, right? I, that's Is very a- interesting. Like, what does someone watching The Matrix for the first time in 2020 think of it? Like, uh, she giggled she a like- couple times, <laughs> <laughs> which made me, you know, so angry. <laughs> I kind of feel like it holds up. I think it does too. I watched it maybe a year ago or so. It did, like I don't uh, think any of the effects are yeah. dated or anything. No, there's some there's there's the part where I think her her real her biggest giggle that I remember is when uh at the end when Neo is realizing his like you know how to work the matrix and mm-hmm. he looks bored fighting <laughs> he's like turns oh, yeah, and yeah. is fighting with one hand and his face is just like I don't want to be here right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, she's like, oh god, <laughs> like yeah, okay, but awesome, right? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> All right, I think that's fun. I uh, I watched a uh, Snowpiercer the other day. Oh, which I haven't is, seen it. Uh, that's the Isn't that, like, Chris Evans or someone. It's Chris Evans, um, and uh, Ed Helms is in it in the, near the end. But it's about mm. uh, it's the guy, it's the guy who directed uh, Parasite. It's yeah. his one of his other movies, oh, really? and it's about a yeah. It's about a tr- it's a humanity. The last of humanity lives on a train that runs on a track that goes around the Earth one time in a year because humanity to save to oddly enough to uh, counter global warming did something to freeze the whole Earth and like all the whole Earth is like in a complete frozen ice age where humans can't survive on it, and for some reason they can travel they can survive on a train that travels around the world. So they've been on this train for 17 or 18 years. And it's like, and it's about, uh, they, they live in the back of the train, which is not the good part of the train. Mm. And they lead a revolt and it's wacky (laughs) and weird. (laughs) And I enjoyed it. I thought it was pretty good. Huh? That was in my queue for a while. I think you should Never put it back it. on your queue. Put it back on your queue. It might still be. Does Netflix still have a queue? Do I still have a queue out there? I believe you do. Yes. Huh. Yeah. Who knew? Any anything to report, Joe? Um, not really. Uh <laughs> like I've just been keeping up with like Better Call Saul and Lego Masters. <laughs> nice. Okay. Did those shows still yeah. going? I know a lot of shows stopped production. I mean, by the time this comes out, Better Call Saul season five is now f- done. Yeah, and Lego Masters, and Lego Masters <laughs> is done. So by the time this is out, Joe has watched all of this. Yeah, <laughs> but at this point, sweet, we have one more episode of each, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. 
Actually, mm-hmm. can I watch Lego Masters after we're done recording this? <laughs> I don't. I don't know when what day that comes out. I kind of just like watch it in batches. Mm-hmm. All right. All right. What what show are we watching, Josh? <laughs> are, are you frozen? What happened? Did you stop talking? Oh, he might be gone. <laughs> uh oh, did we lose him? Are we gonna have to clap again? <laughs> I was severely. Uh, you guys just completely froze and were gone for a while. <laughs> you were so frozen just, to us. <laughs> I just stopped talking and got Great. scared. So when we like sync that together, it'll just be all three of us talking about how we can't hear each other. <laughs> oh, cool. I just I just stopped talking in fear. So ah. my my track is blank and okay, scary. Great. <laughs> um speaking of scary stuff, uh should I guess I guess we should talk about the show that we're gonna watch today. Spooky show. Yeah. Not not really, actually. <laughs> not at all. It's a show that I cannot believe that we've have not done. Um mm-hmm. it's a show that deserves to be talked about, and it's mm. a show that there is a debate on which season is the last season. Oh. Mm. Interesting. Sounds like a lot of shows. It's one show. Yeah. Just one, just the one <laughs> show. Uh, but the show we're going to watch today is Arrested Development. Oh. Oh, snap. I do not so, know how. I don't know why we haven't done it before. So. Well, I think it's because it's controversial of when the ending is. Right. Yeah. So like, and what are we doing? Are we doing just the first what, three or what is your plan here, Josh? <laughs> I mean, my thought was the original three. Uh-huh. Um, okay. The other, I, I mean, we could just go to five because there's five seasons. There's five. Yeah. So and, and oddly enough, is there the going to be a six? Is, I mean, I didn't even do that. I didn't even do that. Uh, I mean, who knew? No one thought there was going to be a season five, you know? Right. Uh-huh. No one thought there'd be a season four. <laughs> exactly. No um, one wanted it. <laughs> um, I don't think I, I saw season five. So I started season five and I never, I didn't even finish it. Hmm. Is season, can we talk about, so was it season four that was filmed like in a specific like storytelling way of kind of out of chronology and stuff? So do you know, yeah, before we even talk about what, what we're going to see. So it, yeah, it was, it was filmed really weird and it was half because they couldn't get the whole cast yeah. to just be in the show the whole time. So they kind of like, were like, they did like, this is Job's episode. This is Maybe's episode. This is Lindsay's episode or whatever. They yeah. did it like that. Um, but now if you go back to season four on Netflix, uh, Mitch Hurwitz, the the producer, I think, of Arrested Development, he like basically did a re. They re-edited the whole of season four. It's completely re-edited. Yeah. So can you still watch it in the original way or not? I think so. So um, I'm actually I can go to Netflix right now and hopefully my computer doesn't just explode. Yeah. While you're looking that up, like in case like. Uh, I assume most people have seen Arrested Development, but in case you're not familiar, like Arrested Development was this show that was on Fox that was a sitcom about um, this like crazy rich and also dysfunctional family, um, and it was essentially like a like kind of a cult classic. Like it didn't really have ratings while it was on, and then once it was released on DVD, then people started to pick it up. Like the same kind of thing kind of happened with like Family Guy, where like. While it was on, people didn't really watch it, but it got like a second life on DVD. Mm-hmm. And so it got canceled after three seasons, but then um, it got really popular on DVD and then Netflix picked it up for a fourth season. And so that's what we were talking about where um, they like got everybody on board because there's a lot of like famous actors in this that like were really successful after the rest of the development and it was hard to get them back together to record another season of TV. So they kind of film stuff piecewise and... Like, originally that fourth season had, it was, like, a character was focused on each episode, um, which typically isn't what happens in the show. Typically, it's all of them together, and it's just, like, kind of cut together. But um, in order to just make it work, they film them all separately, for the most part. 
Um, and so what they did, so uh, on Netflix right now, so what they did was they remixed season four, and it's called Season Four Remix Fateful Consequences. It has like a, a tagline to it. Um, so mm-hmm. if you're just in like your normal uh, Netflix usage when you like select the season you want the se- if you go to season four you're getting the remix season but mm-hmm. you can go to the trailers in more section of arrest development and all of season four original cut is in there okay so mm-hmm. both the original cut and the remix cut that is now i guess official canon are available so yeah so have you guys seen the original and or the remix of season four? Um, I watched all of season four original in one day with a couple people when it came out because we were yeah. so excited that more Arrest Development was happening uh, when it came out back in 2013. Um, mm. That was too much Arrested Development to watch <laughs> in one day. Just FYI. Ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah, um, I had like... I had caught up on the show on DVD um, and then when season four came out, I watched it and was just sort of whelmed, not underwhelmed, not overwhelmed, (laughs) but just whelmed. (laughs) And then I stopped paying attention and had no idea there was even a season five. Yeah. So seasons one through three were 2003 to 2006, all in a row, essentially. Um, And then season four came out in 2013 on Netflix. And then season five waited five more years and came out 2018 to 2019 because season five came out in like the first whole chunk of season five came out and then they waited a little bit. And then the second chunk of season five came out on Netflix. So that's how they did it. So, I mean, the total length of beginning to quote unquote end is 16 years for the show which is a very Mm -hmm. long time. Um, And according to news, like it says uh, Netflix is unenthusiastic about a season six. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. Of arrest development. Sure. Uh, So so I submit for the approval of the midnight society uh, that we watch seasons one through three and do the original, basically the original run of the show. Same as we did for like, uh x files you know yeah we only did the original and like that's on like netflix now or something for some reason i just assume seasons one through three is only on dvd (laughs) no uh, no everything (laughs) everything is on netflix yes okay okay great yeah yeah i kind of imagine that like uh pretty much everyone is like past arrest development like maybe with the exception of like porsche de rossi or something like i mean everyone else is like Jason Bateman's like a like crushing it. Yeah, Jason Bateman's probably the busiest. He's a yeah. Netflix hero. Mm-hmm. I uh I went watching uh Ozark uh nice. during quarantine as well. So I started season three of that because I didn't I didn't realize that was a thing still. <laughs> and it's pretty good. Yeah. Still pretty good. A thumbs up. <laughs> I, I I also haven't started season three yet, but I enjoyed seasons one and two. Um, yeah, and I'm intrigued. Yeah, there. Uh, I would say this is a really good time to watch shows that you were like, I remember playing watching that show. Mm-hmm. I should watch it again. Uh, so yeah, making up for lost time, lost TV mm-hmm. time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I mean, I I remember at least. I, I don't think there's much we can like predict or say or whatever about you know what the pilot is until we just kind of like watch it and analyze it essentially. Mm-hmm. But. I mean, seasons one through three of AD uh, in in my memory, and even when I like rewatch it, I'm like, "What a perfect show! Such a good show! <laughs> Such yeah. a good show!" I'm I'm coming into this being a big fan. Probably going to have a hard time finding things that are wrong with this. Okay, <laughs> a hard time having any sort of bias. That's I'm gonna <laughs> try. I'm gonna try to be uh, to to run straight and narrow but you know okay there, there i, I have challenge some, you to have find some... one bad thing about this pilot all right <laughs> done i'll fight i'll figure it out it's gonna be that tobias isn't in enough jean shorts he might not be <laughs> in any actually probably not but 
well, we'll see. We'll see how good this pilot is. How what it what it really like kind of flushes out, and if knowing everything that we know about the show, especially seasons one through three, like it was like, wow, did this really show us what this uh, this show is going to be about? And did it make us actually want to watch the next episode? Also, there's a there's two tech there's technically two pilots to this show. There is mm. there's the one on Netflix, but also if you have the DVDs, there is a different pilot and it's pretty much exactly the same except every once in a while there's slightly different jokes i know this because i own the dvds for season one through three and they're pretty much some of, <laughs> of the only dvds do. i they're almost they're some of the dvds yeah. i haven't gotten rid of so does that mean the pilot gets a different name um or is it still I, called pilot i think it's still called pilot <laughs> fortunately pilot one pilot two <laughs> i think it's it might be named something um it's called quote unquote pilot. Yeah. It's just called pilot, <laughs> unfortunately. Uh, it's funny. Which is a bummer. But yeah, the pilots are just slightly different on the on Netflix and what they were on TV, I think, and then what they are. The DVD I think just has both. I mm-hmm. think is what's happening. So I'm not I did 100%. not know that. Yeah. It's 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 neat. It's a uh, it's the one thing you can definitely tell is like at one point in the pilot, Job tells somebody that, oh, they call it tricks because Job's always like con- uh, corrects people when they call his magic tricks instead of illusions. Mm-hmm. Um, and someone says like, oh, I want a trick. And he says something like tricks are what tricks are what kids do for candy or something like that. Um, but in like the pilot on the dvd he says tricks or something that like whores do for money <laughs> so that's a difference <laughs> that's one difference i do know which is very weird. i thought that was just like an edited tv version because i remember that i also thought he said what what whores do for candy <laughs> but but that makes more sense that he says kids <laughs> whores are tricking for candy because i think he's i feel like he kids. says yeah, I feel like he says tricks are what whores do for money or candy. Okay, maybe that's what he <laughs> says. But I don't think he says that in the one we're going to watch. Okay. I don't think he says. We'll I don't think he we'll says. See. We will see. Um, should we see now? Does anyone else got anything else to say about this show before we go in? Um, to- tricks is a garbage cereal. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Yeah. So Captain Crunch all the way. Crunch berries. All right. <laughs> All right, fair. It's PB uh, crunch. shots have been fired. <laughs> Lost a lot of fans just now. Yeah. <laughs> when you post this, you gotta like post it on YouTube. Is like first and last shoots hard on cereal. <laughs> <laughs> gonna edit For, just this part. First up. and last member Joe gets canceled. <laughs> How do you guys feel about kicks? Yeah, but, I mean, I'm, they're fine. <laughs> yeah, they, it's, they whelm me. Yeah, they whelm. It's a better <laughs> snack than a cereal. Mm, I feel like a good yeah dry kick isn't bad yeah a dry kick yeah not Uh, bad all right stop it no serious cereal talk (laughs) we're gonna go watch this more cereal uh, when we get when we come back it's pilot time we're gonna we'll be we'll be back after the pilot of Arrested Development. We are back from the first episode of Arrested Development, the pilot, unfortunately, one of the greatest shows ever made, decided to name it Pilot. They could have done better. <laughs> Ron Howard, you could do better. Um, He's in charge of naming the episodes. Yeah, yeah, that's what he does. Narrator and in charge of that. Um, but we're back. Jimmy, do you have a write-up for us? I do. I do. Okay. Uh, after his father fails to promote him within the family business... Michael accepts a job in Arizona until his dad is arrested for shady bookkeeping. And that's all the, uh, it's an arrested development. It is. (laughs) Hey, Oh, I mean, yeah. I mean, that's kind of the the main thing. Like Michael decides that he's going to like get out of town and doesn't want to deal with his family anymore. Mm -hmm. Yep. So it's the Bluth family um, runs this. Is it a real estate company? Uh, yeah, they're I think so. they're definitely yeah they're they're 
Well, they can they build the houses and everything too. Yeah. So, uh, so it's like a a housing company a development a that's, development company. Yeah, that's run by the the patriarch. Uh, is it George his, George Senior? George, George Bluth. George yep. Bluth Senior. Um, and then there's four kids: Michael, uh, Job, um, Lindsay, Lindsay, and, and Buster. Buster. And like Michael is pretty sure that he's gonna take over the company, and that's the announcement that Dad is gonna make. Um, but then it all just sort of hits the fan when um george decides to give it over to lucille his wife and then he also gets arrested (laughs) right (laughs) um and then also like Lindsay, his twin sister yeah who is portia de rossi do we know uh, what he gets arrested for uh she comes like tax evasion i don't well i so i they're they're very uh they're they're very coy about it the whole the whole series they don't really talk about it uh-huh. That's mm-hmm. like basically what Michael's trying to figure out. Mm. Uh, he wants, he's like trying to figure out why. So th- they they run off during these three seasons. They run off on various reasons on why uh-huh. he could possibly have been arrested. One yeah. of them's like, one of them's like tax evasion. Uh, one of them's like he built houses illegally in Iran. Yeah. Like for Saddam Hussein. And so mm-hmm. like he committed light treason at some point, <laughs> they think. Uh so light so yeah. So treason. they don't they do not they do not spell out why he got arrested right gotcha. away. Or I mean really He's kind of ever in a way. Stuff. But yeah. But obviously there's something shady. He knows something shady's happening at some point. Yeah. Um So in in other in other I guess the bottom line is it sets up that the patriarch is gone and now the family's left to fend for themselves. And initially Michael was going to like up and leave, but he decides to stick around because otherwise the family's just helpless. Well, the family like kind of got him together before he left when he was going to tell them we're leaving. Mm -hmm. And then they were like, we actually need you because we, we were trying, they were trying to be like, we can do it on our own. We don't need him or whatever. And then they were like, we're too dysfunctional to like, we need someone. We need that patriarch figure to like actually make this family work. Right. So that's like all the plot stuff. And like, honestly, like none of that really matters. (laughs) Like that's not why people like or watch this show. No, not really. But mm-hmm. I mean, it is it is kind of like, I mean, as far as that, that's the plot point. But that is like Michael's driving thing throughout this whole show mm-hmm. is that he's just like trying to he acts like he doesn't care about his family. And but he wants like their approval and wants to be in charge uh-huh. and wants to be the patriarch. He wants like, to feel needed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so I feel like it did a good job with him at least mm-hmm. right away because you could see he's like well we're gonna get out of here but then the minute they're like but come on and he's like all right fine yeah <laughs> yeah he sees that george michael likes having his family around and now it's it's really yeah like you said he's under the it's under the guise that michael is trying to keep the company together but it's it really ends up being that he's trying to keep the family together yep um <clears throat> i think for whatever we, we, reason we can kind of go through this one one by one and it'll pretty much explain all the characters i think but they did a, i think they did a pretty good job for the most part of kind of giving maybe not a motivation but at least like a a task or kind of what some character is all about mm-hmm. you know some of this could be <laughs> that uh you know i'm like i know what's happening but uh george michael right away like he gets he doesn't he doesn't know his family and then he meets his cousin maybe Mm -hmm. and he's all i mean he's very like he's like a wound up ball of emotions and like he's just and hormones (laughs) yeah and and then he ends up kind of like basically falling for maybe his cousin you can tell near the end and that's his cousin and at the end he's like haha maybe we should kiss again like because she has this like um like pranker i guess i don't know i called her a prankster in my notes but i don't know if that's necessarily <laughs> the correct way to do it um she's defiant teen she's definitely defiant um and so she wants to play a prank on her mom and dad who are Lindsay, michael's sister michael's sister 
and her husband, Tobias Funke. Um, and so she wants to like go like, hey, we're cousins, but they don't know. Like, they think we don't see each other that enough, so we can play a trick on them, and we can make out in front of them, and it'll be hilarious. Mm-hmm. Yeah, teach them and a that lesson kind of, that we never it, see each other. And it's kind of funny because like, George Michael's like not okay with that like at all. And then it happens like for a split second. And now he's like super down, <laughs> you know, <laughs> he's like, oh, we should do that again because it'd be funny again. Right. And she's like, what? I don't. We already did that. Hmm. Yeah, I'd be interested. I bet that received mixed reviews. Like the pilot part, in general. Um, or I, the, well, the, the cousin the on part, cousin I think stuff. The pilot is absolutely <laughs> perfect. But yeah, just the cousin stuff. <laughs> Because I think, um, like, first of all, I think of this show, like, I, I can't, I was just thinking about this the other day because my wife and I started to watch Shit's Creek. Have you guys watched that show? I've seen the pilot. Nope. It's, uh, it's like a very similar feel of, like, the rags to, the, the riches to rags, uh, like, this this family that doesn't know what to do without money. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You know, like in a ridiculous manner. I was like, it feels very much like, like Arrested Development. And I feel like, I don't know, this uh, probably, I'm sure that story exists before this in television, but it also has the like reality TV vibe, like, like the office or, or Parks and Rec, like, but this is before like the way that, it's shot. right? Yeah. With like the handy cam. I feel like this has to be before those shows, right? Yeah. For sure, Parks and Oh, yeah. Rec. I mean, this is 2003. Well, so. yeah. And, like, part of the structure is, yeah, the way it's shot with, like, a handy cam, but there's also a narrator in Ron Howard who's kind of explaining the story, and then he also cuts back to, like, archival footage or, like, newspaper clippings to, like, explain background and things that are going on. So it does have a feel of, like, a documentary. Yeah, I kind of yeah. feel like sometimes this show is like a master class on how to use a narrator correctly, like in a comedy, at least. Mm. Mm-hmm. I just feel like he they use him to explain stuff, and then they also use him not not only to like document and explain things, but they also use the narrator as like a like a non obtrusive way to like make some jokes land sometimes mm-hmm. too, mm. yeah. which is. What other comedies use narrators? Uh, like Jane the Virgin. Blackish. Oh, Jane, Jane the Virgin, the Virgin. definitely yeah. used a narrator. Um, um, and How I Met Your Mother. Oh, yeah, sure, sure. Which kind of sure. does the same thing in that the narrator has this foresight because he's telling the story. Um, yeah. Yeah. Something like The Wonder Years used a narrator. The Wonder Years isn't necessarily like a comedy, but it's kind of like a it's like yeah. almost like a family sitcom you know yeah. in a way and, and the narrator in um whatchamacallit in wonder years is more structural it's more of tying the pieces together and it's not um like it's the plot na- device right like the narrator doesn't have a character like it does in the rest of development or how about your mother even right and it's a it's a ta- the narrator in this one is a, especially it's a talking head it's not someone it's not someone that's been through it and is like looking back or isn't He's like almost all knowing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's like Ron Howard's almost a like narrator. a God figure in this one in a way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, people we haven't talked about. Uh, there's Tobias, who is Lindsay's husband, who was a former doctor who apparently tried to do also. So he's a, he was a psychiatrist. That was his doctor profession. Mm-hmm. And he tried mm-hmm. to give, uh, uh, CPR. I was gonna. I was gonna say mouth to mouth, <laughs> but it was CPR. He tried to give CPR to somebody who was just sleeping and broke their sternum, according to the, like the newspaper that was shown. Um, and, I, and he lost his medical license. But I'm like, well, his medical license wasn't to be a like a medical. He, he wasn't. He lost his doctor's license. He wasn't a medical doctor. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's weird right. that you could lose your psychology doctor's doctorate like license. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make any. That doesn't make any sense. The silly thing. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Um, (laughs) And then he he, I mean, there's there's the a running joke like uh, that is prevalent through the whole series, which is kind of said really quick in this one. But of like, 
he's like, I got something to tell you guys. And Lindsay's like, you're gay. And he's like, what? No, what are you talking <laughs> about? Um, mm -hmm. There is some fun, like, kind of like nods. Uh, the company that uh, Michael was going to go work for was called was Sitwell in Arizona, who is oh. becomes is the is the company that like Joe works for later. And Sitwell becomes like a big there's two Sitwell characters that become big in season two, I mm -hmm. think, is when they come in. So that's like a big thing. But I don't even, you know, do they have it planned out or did it just kind of work fun. out? Um, and then there's Job, the other brother, one of the other brothers. And he's just like a he wants to be a magician, but he's terrible at it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah, he he just fails. So he the news told them how the trick was done and how they figured it out. So then he got like he's getting like blackballed from the Magicians Alliance, I think is what they're called. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and the so so Jimmy told me to say say one bad thing about the Yo, pilot. Yeah, I forgot that. Already. And one thing that's always kind of like rubbed me weird, and it's a pilot, so you know they're that for for a for a show that it, this is like a pilot essentially. Um, they seem to have most things worked out really well, like. That, you know they mm -hmm. the the show is in the right direction and these characters all seem to be who they are going to be and they're following the the, the path but the one that seems a little off to me is buster um hmm. they kind of they kind of i mean buster is like a like a mama's boy and he he's sheltered and you know he, whatever but he's just like a little off in this show like he like studied cartography and like went to classes and stuff and like he wasn't good at those things but it just he doesn't do any of that stuff later in any of the other episodes he doesn't like take classes really mm -hmm. um yeah the character that. isn't really well fleshed out in this episode yeah not at all like mm -hmm. um so buster's like I needs work. He, they, he, they they use that joke again later about well because then because then they use the joke again in this pilot that he also took like he's just taking random stuff. He also took um, like some sort of 16th century uh, history or, or business or whatever. And so then he so then they put him in the business meetings, which he can't handle. But later in the seasons, he's like with his like map stuff. He they like put him in charge of like the like sailing the yacht or something, which goes terribly wrong. Do you remember that? I'm trying to remember that. I know and they and do a uh, topography map I know he, thing. I know he digs something up and he has a big rock in the back of a car later on in one episode. Um, it's just something weird about his character that doesn't like fit to me for the rest of the series. Okay. Like he, he's much more bustery in the second, like second episode on. So I'm in. Mean, could it just almost be even that, like maybe Tony Hale just like wasn't quite there yet? Like you know, like yeah, we first these we things kind of first take thing. Time. He's taking time. Like <clears throat> uh, when it when you get first episode and then they improve in the second episode, that's pretty normal. Yeah, for a lot of mm -hmm. things. But if it takes longer, then that's where it's like annoying and yeah. bad. It, it, throughout the rest of the show he kind of has those characteristics that you're talking about where he's kind of like a mama's boy and like very specific weird things about him um in yeah. this first pilot he's just kind of presented as just like just like jared kushner where he's just like <laughs> 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 just like sheltered and rich and like fails upward and is ineffectual and that's right. like uh, the character takes like is much more interesting beyond just that yeah 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 he may he may just not have been you know written as a big part yeah mm -hmm. of this and so not as fleshed out i know that i read that a couple of the characters weren't um supposed to be as big but then they just did so well on screen that they wrote i think like uh david cross um is that his name right mm -hmm. yeah as, well, uh tobias Tobias's real name like he wasn't supposed to be as big of a character but he like kind of jumped off and I think Jeffrey Tambor wasn't supposed to be that big I think they were kind of put him in jail and then and then he was going to be kind of behind the right you wouldn't I mean he wasn't much. yeah yeah he was uh George Michael the dad and he did not uh 
He, I mean, he wasn't in the episode till at least midway through before they even introduced him. Really, yeah, I, I don't think it's true. So I actually was like, oh yeah, it took a while, um, because <clears throat> he's such a big part of the show. Yeah, the show. I mean, the, essentially, the show the revolves around him in a way. He's the one that's yeah. arrested. I also just got the fact that maybe the the this this uh the show has so many different uh plays on words that just the name of itself um it's arrested development and obviously like george bluth got arrested and that like is the development that kind of like happened for the show um they make a joke about later in the season one of the seasons about how like males growing up are kind of in an arrested development of like trying to figure out some stuff in like being being a young male growing up kind of thing and then i also was like oh they like build housing developments. Like it's also possible right. that that's another thing. Mm-hmm. I just got yeah. that one today. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. This this show keeps on giving. It's very elaborately written. It's a uh, it's it, it's it's one of those shows that oddly enough it did not do well on TV. Um, and pretty confident it got canceled. Yeah. So that's yeah. So it's yeah. a fun it's a fun thing that like uh, season three was very short. It was only thirteen episodes. So, um, and it's very interesting that like a show that's so, I feel like such a cult hit for sure. Then the minute it hit the DVD, cause that's what we had back then. Like everyone loves this show or most people do. It's a yeah. very loved show. And it's mm-hmm. one of those shows that if you watch episode seasons one through three, and then you go back and watch all of them again. Yep. It's like, Oh my God, there's a joke that you don't get in season one unless you've watched season three. Yeah. Like they, they, they this show seemingly was elaborately planned. And out. I think that's a lot of the reason why it failed, why it was canceled because it's just like, it's meant to be watched over and over again. <clears throat> and it's meant to be you binged. Do you watch like, you know, episode after episode because things are going to tie between episodes. Um, mm-hmm. So it's meant for more of like a DVD or streaming model. Um, and doesn't really work for like network TV watching it once every week. And if you miss an episode, you miss an episode. Like you can't really miss episodes of Arrested Development. No, no. which is also interesting because it, it ahead seems of its time. Like, yeah. Well, I mean, it was, but then once the time caught up with it and they did a season four and they did a season five, it doesn't seem like people cared as much. Yeah. Like yeah, it was I'm too late. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'll, I'll, I'll tell everybody I've ever like to meet to like watch Arrest Development, but I'm sitting here saying I haven't finished season five yet. You know? <laughs> yeah, I have not watched season five at all. I don't think. I'm ashamed. I will say <laughs> that I will say that season four's uh, remix. I watched like two episodes of it, and it felt way better than the original version of hmm, season huh. four. So I think see, I, okay. there's a there's a reason why the remix is the thing that will auto play on netflix Mm. and not the original cut like they did a really good job i think going back and i mean what what other show really goes back and goes all right we messed that whole season up we're gonna completely re-edit it and like make it feel more like what you think the show should feel like kind of thing Mm -hmm. It's very interesting that they did it like they did that work (laughs) right yeah i mean it's a lot of work and like did they make you know? What well, did they make money doing that? You know, probably not. Not a lot. Not a lot. I'm sure Netflix wasn't like, oh sure, yeah, we'll pay you money to re-edit the show that's been out for Ron two years. Howard's not sitting at home doing the re-edits, <laughs> like just bored. Ron Howard wrote this entire, did the whole show. It's all, it's all Ron Howard. <laughs> be amazing. I wish that'd be funny. Um, so. Pilot, what do you two think? Is this a good pilot? Yes. <laughs> Joe? <laughs> uh, yeah, I think it's I think it's obviously very good, um, well written, and um, it gives you a good introduction to all the characters. Uh, but I do think that it's just it was at the wrong time. I think two thousand three is too early for this type of show. Um, mm-hmm. I think if this was you know. 2015 or something and this was a brand new show starting up um and like all 
20 episodes of season one are available on Netflix right away, it's probably a runaway hit. Mm -hmm. I mean, luckily, at least, I mean, you guess as far as pilot goes, week one, at the moment, you don't know that this show requires like, or like wants multiple watch throughs kind of Mm -hmm. thing. So you're only watching a pilot going, okay, yeah, I'll watch season two. But even as, I mean, but you're Mm -hmm. right for, this is a very streamy stream DVD type show. Like we finished the first episode and episode two started right away on Netflix. And Mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, let's get, let's keep it. Let's go. Yeah. Let's Mm -hmm. do this. Hmm. I have a question. Yeah. Question for you guys. So I'm thinking like, okay, Fox picks this up thinking it's going to be like, it's, it's sitcom, right? Like, but then they get like the show, it's got no laugh track. You cannot air reruns of this like non sequentially. It doesn't make any sense. Like, like you could with like friends or anything else, you know, you could just watch any random episode of friends and it doesn't very little matters. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, but then you have like the streaming world. And this show, to me, I love it because, like, with, like, the DVDs, you could, like, you'd watch it, and then you, like, you still didn't have streaming things, so you just, you had these DVDs. So you watch it again, and you get, you see, there are, like, so many jokes and stuff that are kind of out of time, if that makes sense. Like, even with this pilot, like, you see, um, like, Lucille's first line is that, something about the homosexuals ruining her day or whatever. And then it circles back. You meet Tobias and then it sets up his whole thing that he's actually going to be on this boat. And it's all this confusion. It's, there's a lot of joke set up. And so like with the DVDs. So what I'm getting at is even if you just blow through this, like binge through this, like a normal Netflix binge, is that even as good as, a DVD watch where you're going to watch this like multiple times in the mid two thousands, because that's what you had to do because then you start to actually pick up on some of these jokes. I mean, I'm, I'm the person that owned the DVDs and did watch them. Cause I was like, well, we don't have Netflix. So we might as well throw in like disc two of season one of arrested development kind of thing. Um, I think it, I think this, this show still works better probably in that scenario, almost in an older scenario where you're forced to watch it over and over again. I mean, I know there was years that that was on that I watched probably another episode and I was like, holy crap, that's a joke that I didn't get. And it was like my 10th time watching an episode, you know? So... So, and and it's just, I mean, that's maybe the nature of like streaming where you watch it and it's gone, you know, you can, you can binge it really fast and you can go back to it, but it's like, unless it's a, unless it's a show that I have known from my past or like a very rare show that it's like really hit me hard. I, I don't go back and rewatch like Netflix shows, you know, I'm not rewatching like season one of Sabrina on Netflix. That's what I'm saying. I'm not doing it. Yeah, the big difference between DVD and Netflix is once you're done watching this season, right, then it goes and suggests you the next thing. Whereas when you finish a DVD, like, it's going to sit in your DVD until you take it out. So, like, you might just (laughs) end up watching it again because it's just like, oh, that's what's in the DVD player? I'll just hit play. Uh, I used to work at all, And then you get how clever this show is. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean the show shines after. This is one of those shows that definitely shines after rewatches. It's a rewatch show, and it gets better and better for like up to a point. Well, there you, you know. go. Maybe they should release season six, but on DVD. <laughs> but it's just seasons not one through Blu-ray. three. <laughs> yeah. yeah, not even Blu-ray, just DVD. They take seasons four and five off of Netflix, and Netflix only sells it at DVDs at like Walgreens or something <laughs> like that. Instant hit. Instant <laughs> hit. I'd go to a Walgreens for that. <laughs> nice. Um, I also agree this is a very good uh, pilot, by the way, just so you guys were wondering. Um, cool. Predictions? I got some. Um, sure. Since you're I, asking. I don't know. 
I don't know how. I mean, <laughs> I would say so nice. I'm very familiar with the finale of season three. I mean, I know all the basic plot points, and I'm sure you guys probably know the general gist of what happens. Um, so mm. I have four just kind of rando things like that I picked up that I was like, let's yeah, let's, let's go for those. So my random ones um, are there's a the newscaster that was on episode one who was reporting mm. about what happened, like how he got arrested. George Booth got arrested and whatnot. Her name was Trisha Thune. That was her Fox News like n- name. Mm-hmm. I think she has a different name, a.k.a. Trisha Thune got married. Or divorced. I mean, there's no way to know. But I think oh. her last name is different. You I don't even know if she's in this episode. Gal, yeah, yeah, I think so. I'm was it say like it. a? Was it actually Fox? I didn't notice. Yeah, it was Fox Six. Is what the <laughs> the, the thing was. Okay, cool. Um, so I think Trisha Thune has a new name, and I'm telling you right now, I don't have a clue if she's even in this episode. So that's old. I'm gambling here. Um, I think Job does a magic trick correctly. Ah. <sighs> I can't recall okay. if he ever does a magic trick correctly in this show, but I figured if they were going to do it for him <laughs> at one point, they'll do it in this episode, right? I'd like to see it. Um, I think there's <laughs> a cowboy. Too. I think there's a cowboy hat worn okay. by somebody, not just sitting on a chair. Unfortunately, if there's a cowboy sitting on a cowboy hat sitting on a chair, I will not take a point. Must be worn. Must be worn on head. And then my last one is someone eats a bluth banana. Sounds good right now. Yeah. I don't like bananas, but we got some bananas. Whatever. <laughs> um, I have uh also some just like random things. Uh the first main character seen on the screen is Job. Okay. Ooh, I like that. Yeah. So we'll know that one right away. Um Who's the second? <laughs> uh maybe. Not okay. part of my prediction, but maybe as a bonus point, maybe. <laughs> maybe maybe yeah um you get a point five. yeah <laughs> i think multiplier uh um someone says the word pickle that's the word of the day pickle pickle <laughs> yeah i'm just gonna write that down to like go like remember word the word the pickle day. yeah like a peewee herman thing <laughs> yep peewee's playhouse yeah. ah! the chair <laughs> <laughs> i think uh i think we see someone throw a football Okay. I'd like to see that. Was this Charlie Brown? Uh, maybe Lucille. I don't know. Who knows? <laughs> um, and I think yeah, not a lot of active. Uh, I think this ends in tears. I think we see someone cry by the end of the show. Mm. Josh, I might cry. <laughs> it's you in the right spot. If it's an FNL host, it counts. <laughs> nice. Um, okay. I also have that Job successfully does an illusion, not uh, a trick. So that's different. Hey, I wrote magic <laughs> trick because I wanted to. I wanted to offend Job during my predictions. <laughs> I have. Um, so in this pilot, there was like an affectionate moment. George Michael hugs Lindsay because he's so happy that they they that they were around. So I think George Michael hugs Lindsay. I think someone goes to jail in this episode as sort of a bookmark. And then my number four is that Lucille wears an animal. Ah, but she's going to be covered in all that red paint. Yeah. Jokes. Uh, Cool. I think we're ready. Should we uh, dive into the finale? It's called Development Arrested. I'm ready. See what they did. Uh, cool. We'll see you after the finale of Arrested Development. And we're back from the final episode of Arrested Development. Uh, Development Arrested is what the title of it was. That was the show. We finished it in its entirety as it was meant to be after it got canceled. Jimmy, do you have a write-up? Yes. Did Did you want me to read that? I would like you to read the write-up. Okay. After returning home from Iraq, George Sr. is finally cleared of all charges 
and Michael is relieved to be the head of a successful company for a change. The real brains behind the madness is revealed, and just as the family begins to celebrate their victory, a whole new set of problems emerge. Bam, bam, bam. The end. I mean, yeah, a whole they they uh they put a lot in this episode. I feel like there was a yeah. lot of stuff that happened. They must have known they were being canceled. You think? I mean, they definitely did. I mean. Most of this last episode was just like almost the reverse of what happened in the first episode, mm-hmm. um, which, which I think they kind of hint at with the the title of it being "Development Arrested," a reverse of "Arrested of Development." Yeah. Oh yeah. They're gonna host another boat party, and Michael's gonna become, like, actually gonna become the head of the company. Um. God, what what else? I'm trying to like remember what happened at the beginning when I was like, "See, Joe, this is exactly like it." <laughs> I yelled at you. Um, oh, there, there's a joke about Michael saying to George Michael, um, mm-hmm. "What a, what I say is always first. Um, yeah. And in in the pilot, George Michael says breakfast, but it's actually family. And then in the finale, he says family, but it's actually breakfast. Right. And there was actually something right before that. I can't remember what it was, but it was another joke from the pilot Mm -hmm. that was like had a different uh, like the opposite of what was said in the pilot. Mm -hmm. But it was. Yeah, it was just in reverse. Yeah. The big things are that it's like it's on a boat and then one of the like major booths gets arrested. Right. Well, the and the pilot begins on the boat, essentially. And this the finale like ends on the boat. Mm -hmm. So um kind of starts yeah. and ends on the boat yeah it's like poetry which is how the pilot also does right it's like poetry <laughs> uh Lindsay finds out that she's not like related to them anymore and she goes like anymore. insane i mean the big the, the the big actual side plot or the big plot was that they have a uh, a business that is like on its way up again. It's not like great yet, but it's on its way up, and it's potentially even sell. The stocks are sellable now, mm-hmm. and all the family owns a certain share to shares to make the majority of the company a Bluth company. Uh, and it's Michael is trying to make sure that no one sells their shares because. He was like, what if you sell your shares? You could get like $2 million. And they're like, oh, wait, I can, we can make $2 million <laughs> right now. Um, so he's trying to like make sure that that doesn't happen. But then the the, the one thing that's like kind of weird and it's one of those like they were probably getting canceled. So maybe they shoehorned this in to like make it the like conclusion of a that they had. But they made like Lucille the mastermind behind the whole thing. Like George senior was almost like her Patsy the whole time. And she like, whatever, whatever she Mm -hmm. wanted to get done, he would do. And then kind of halfway through this episode, he was like, he's like, you, he's like, you're going to have to, to figure out, like follow her directions. And then she was trying to, she was kind of bending Michael to her will, even though he was not okay with that. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah they set her up to be the fall guy in this episode yep which is which is fun which also a husband and wife cannot be arrested for the same crimes (laughs) i don't know if you remember that from the pilot right Mm -hmm. i think yeah like one more big reversal is at the end at the end of the pilot michael decides that they he needs to stay and keep the family together whereas at the end of the finale uh, he decides that him and George Michael are just going to run off to wherever their like hideout was. I forget. It was like somewhere Cabo. in Mexico. Yeah. Um, yeah. And he says that the family can fend for themselves. Yep. Oh, and, and also another reversal is that at the beginning of this episode, George Michael's like, we should leave the whole family. Mm-hmm. But in the pilot, he wants to stay because he wants to like be around the family. Mm hmm. So, mm-hmm. because a lot of in- he got to second base with, maybe, yep. 
Another, this isn't a reversal, but this is like a, a, a bookendy thing is that in the pilot, they explain the banana sand and banana stand. they say it wasn't their idea. They stole it from like a Korean guy who mm-hmm. had a banana stand mm-hmm. and then Lucille somehow got him deported. So then it, throughout the seasons, then they get some sort of like exchange or, or do they adopt him? On young? They had, they adopt she adopts on young. Okay. And then so then in the finale of season three, it turns out that he is the grandson of the ba- original banana stand owner, and that yep. he's like actually been sent to like derail their family. Mm-hmm. I that, I just think that's great. It'd be like kinda weird to just throw that in, but they kind of like dropped on young's like storyline sort of in like season three for a while Mm. um so he wasn't around a whole lot but they had they would randomly like one time kind of like a couple episodes before that i think they showed him like in the wall like with like a radio like he was like listening in on them so Mm -hmm. like there was like a there was like a thing you yeah there was like a thing you knew that was like going on with on young but you didn't know what and so they actually paid that off then at the end. So that was probably, that's awesome. that was, I, I remember being like, oh, that's fun. Like mm-hmm. instead of like a, you just made up that like An Young's father like got screwed over in the last episode. Like even if they just made that up, it worked because they had like a little snippet of him like spying on the family right. before. You knew that something was going on with An Young. So the reveal of the grandfather was more of a like, plot revealed rather than just like a random thing that they threw in yeah there's a random thing to go like oh we need to finish up all the characters plot lines Mm -hmm. yeah that's fun this shows it's there's so much forethought Mm -hmm. that is just very impressive they do so much of that with buster i feel like his entire plot line is all foreshadowed jokes about his hand and and stuff Mm mm-hmm and like at the end, so he loses his hand in season two, I I want to say. Yeah, somewhere right there. And then and then at the end, they're all when they're all chanting about their two million dollars, they're eating. They're gonna eat like a, they have a turkey maybe or something. I don't know. He's got like a electric turkey carver, mm-hmm. and he's waving it above his head. Oh, when they're yelling his, two million, yeah. two million, when they're talking along about the money they're going to get. <laughs> plastic hand or whatever, his prosthetic hand, and he shaves off his fingers and, and uh, Michael, Jason Bateman, says, oh, you would have lost the hand anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Which is just great. And, and there's so many jokes like that. They're just throwaway lines. They're just like, they happen so fast that you just don't catch them uh one 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 good buster hand joke this not in this episode or the one uh, the pilot but it's a great one is at some point before buster loses his hand he has the hand chair that that was like given to the maid and it's when buster tries to run away and go to mexico but he ends up just at like their maid's house Mm -hmm. and he thinks they're in mexico um, and he's like, he's like, oh, I used to have a chair just like that. And like, uh, I think it's, I think it's the narrator, Ron Howard's like, Buster never thought he would miss a hand so much. Like <laughs> it was like, and then like five episodes later, he loses his hand. <laughs> also, we didn't talk about the end screens last time, like the end title screens. Mm-hmm. They had the uh, next time on Arrest Development oh, and generally yeah. those, those are, actually like crucial to the plot in some time some in some way and a lot of them don't happen in real episodes they only happen in the next time on arrest development Mm -hmm. i'm pretty confident buster loses his hand to the seal in a next time on arrest development oh that's interesting i mean i I think that also I think it might also like, I mean, they, they talk about it and deal with it. I think in one of the episodes as well, but I think the first time you hear about it is like, he's, he goes into the ocean and then like loses it. And then I well, can't remember whether or not that's what actually, the next time on is. 
right um <laughs> but i but I, I really feel like he loses it there first but like the even if even if they like kind of go through that the scenes that they show in the next time aren't ever scenes that are happening yeah. in the next episode it's like Never different actually it, yeah it's not the same it's shots jokes. yeah those are just jokes but they did a little sad. epilogue and i know joe you said on this one you thought the epilogue should have been longer or you thought it was going to be yeah because there was just two scenes in the epilogue right it was um instead of saying next time on arrested development it said in the epilogue and it was mm -hmm. oh michael finding george senior on their boat when they're driving away yep um and then it was maybe pitching her story to ron howard as a tv show but he says it should be a movie Mm -hmm. yeah and that was it like i was expecting more things of either job or lucille or the other characters yeah yeah i could i could have saw they could have they could have done five minutes of that block you yeah. know almost. but at the time you know with the with like it's cult following that that was like a big reveal right that ron how for ron howard to say like this is getting canceled maybe it doesn't work as a series but maybe a movie and a, and apparently Horowitz the writer that was like his deal he didn't really want to go on and write more of a series but he wanted to write a movie and actually they said that um they had announced that after that they were going to write in a, a series for Netflix and then they planned to do a movie but that never yeah. came to fruition I mean is that a big thing does that hit home to you, Joe, with uh, the community movie never happening Six and seasons people talk? Yeah, that kind it's of thing. Like, thing. it's kind of so. kind of similar. Where like a lovable show that people wanted, and then it was over, and it's like you didn't finish it or something. Yeah, I would. I, like, well, maybe we'll make a movie at this point. Like ten years later from like the start of Community, I think I could go for a, a community movie right about now. Would it would it be uh would it be like serviceable? I because I feel like something like that would be like, hey, community movie. It's on Netflix now. Mm -hmm. Like no theater, nothing. Just like a Netflix movie. Like I don't think it would do very well in a theater. No, absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, theaters are closed. <laughs> well, especially <laughs> right now. Yeah, you're right. But I meant more more so on know. a pretend a normal summer. I don't know. Childish Gambinos in a movie. I, I mean, here's the deal. I would I would probably go see an Arrested Development show, like, th uh, I mean, uh, movie in the theater. And I like Community just fine, but I wouldn't go see... I wouldn't go to the theater to see a Community movie. Yeah. Like, it has to be very, like, I'm very into this show. And, like, I feel like, Joe, you probably wouldn't see a Arrested Development movie, but you'd probably go see the Community movie. Yeah, I'd go see the Community movie. Why not? <laughs> Jimmy, you don't go. You'd go see the newsroom movie, but we wouldn't go see that. I would watch all of those films. <laughs> Please call me if you. <laughs> I'd watch, but, he, but I'd watch every single one of those films on if it, they came out on like Netflix or Hulu. Like I would probably yeah. watch them the, that weekend they came out. Yeah, absolutely. I would. So, I would. There's that. I would go um, to any movie right now if I could. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I would do anything outside my home. Yeah, I would go I see could. like uh Paul Blart Mall Cop 3 right now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> Paul Blart 3. Was Paul, Paul Blart Mall Cop 3. Mall Coppin. <laughs> Still Coppin. S <laughs> Still Coppin. Straight to the mall. <laughs> Core in mall. theaters. Rated Never R. To be released anywhere. <laughs> rated R. I'd go see a Paul Blart Mall Cop rated R. I'd go see that. Can I? Because okay. I would be like, what would make that rated R? It's just hyper violent. <laughs> He's just shooting dudes. Rated <laughs> just He's like Rambo. <laughs> He's just mowing people down at the mall. I'm Yikes. into this. I'd watch this. Yikes. Paul Blart. I would watch that. What's his name? Kevin something the, is that the king of queens yeah <laughs> the king of queens himself is that uh Kevin oh, James we do that no show. yeah that sounds right is that right I think that's right that's his name I don't know Ke is it Kevin James do people with two first names are yeah, weird yeah it sounds like, like a it. character's name <laughs> that he would nice. play they named him twice 
Like, what's a relatable name? How about Kevin James? Yeah. How about uh, Rick Stevens? Uh, Kevin James, born Kevin George Crip Nipfing? Nipfing? <laughs> Crip. <laughs> Crip Nipfing? <laughs> what are you saying? It looked like a K-R, but it's a K-N, so I assume it's a silent K. Kevin mm, George sure. Nipfing. Knipfing. Okay. So he switched that whole crappy last name to James, is what yeah, you're saying? Yeah. That's a good call. It is interesting that he went with Kevin James and not Kevin George. Yeah. Maybe, Maybe there was a Kevin George already in, in, in the SAG community. I guess so. Yeah. I heard you can't you can't take someone's name. You can't. There, there's never going to be another. There's not going to be another actor that can be named Brad Pitt. I think until like Brad Pitt's dead. Hmm. <laughs> Interesting. I think that's how that works. But I'm not a hundred percent. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not in the SAG yet. I'm waiting. Yeah, we're not. This podcast isn't big enough for us to be SAG. I think it's in the mail, it. but. Um, all in all, great times were had. Conclu- <laughs> conclusion, <laughs> conclusion to the show. How what? How was the finale for everybody? Did it did it work well? Was it maybe? Uh, I I don't want to put any I don't put any words in anyone's mouth before you tell me how you feel. <laughs> like as a as a ever. pilot, I it think did a lot of fun things for to the pilot it wasn't you know not as not as good as newsroom but you know pretty good (laughs) i think it's for me it's kind of the same as the pilot where it's like it's clearly very good and very well thought out but it really works in the context of the full thing um and especially like it really works well on a dvd yeah (laughs) yeah Yeah. i mean i feel like if i can almost like nitpick for a minute um Please. I I almost thought for like what a else second is a podcast for <laughs> for for like a little bit I would, they were just kind of like I mean they were trying to cover all their bases and really wrap up everybody's story and I feel like they in general did a really good job um but like some of the things were like coming like rapid fire at you like oh Lindsay's adopted like yo the um An Young's a spy blah 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 like a lot of these things happened within like a five minute period like really fast and for a little bit i was like who these are real this is really fast you know like for the casual viewer on their first run through of the show there's probably once again still a lot of things that they miss so like joe said it's it is a definite like this is a dvd series (laughs) like it's weird to think about like but it's true like like this this uh, it's a good finale but it's one of those things where it's like it's better it's it's just it's better with age this this is a wine show <laughs> the show is better with wine <laughs> that's probably true <laughs> yeah, probably probably yeah yeah viewers at home watch this whole show watch it all <laughs> Don't watch do one it. through th- watch one through three. Uh, I mean, I, this might have kickstarted me into kind of want to rewatch the 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 four re-edit because I never watched all of that, and then get into five. And uh, I think I owe it to uh, Arrested Development to finish the show, considering that seasons one through three are some of my favorite TV that exists. Yeah, so should we get into predictions? Yeah. All right. Well, I mean, I'll go first really quick because I got zero points because I went random and none of it worked out for me. Uh, Number one, I said that the news lady was back on and her name had changed. Well, none of those things were true. She was not on there. They did that mad money guy. Oh, yeah. Um, I forgot what his name was, but that's a real show in in real life. Um, uh, Job does a magic trick. Job does no magic this time. I think that was an opportunity missed. He could have performed a good magic trick on the boat this time, but he did not. Um, I said there's a cowboy hat. I, I scoured the crowd while this is happening, and I did not. I did not see cowboy hat. And someone eats hats. a. Yeah, there was, but that's not that's not what a cowboy wears. And then I said someone eats a a bluth banana, 
And they talked about the banana stand, but no one ate a banana. Word. Zero. Goose egg. Um, I had that the first character we see is Job, which is wrong. We saw Michael first. Um, I had that someone says pickle. I didn't, I didn't hear a pickle. I did not either. Um, <laughs> someone throws a football. I didn't see a football. Um, and that so, there are someone threw a punch. Yeah. If you know what I mean. I, I was, I almost was tempted to do a punch. I had done that in previous shows. Um, and then I had that uh, that we see tears as someone cries, and Michael cried on the boat. So, yep, I actually get a point. Yeah. Nice, yeah. They literally made fun of him for crying. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, yeah, they they like showed that scene twice. Um. Okay, I had George Michael hugs Lindsay, which I don't think happened. Someone goes to jail, so Lucille gets arrested. Yep. Um, so there's one. Job successfully does an illusion. No. Lucille wears an animal. I don't think she wore she didn't wear any fur or anything that I saw. So no, I don't think so. Yeah. But so one for spaghetti gym. Way to go, my digital DiGiorno dude. <laughs> way to go. And way to go, listeners, for digitally listening to this while eating a DiGiorno Ooh. pizza and celebrating Jimmy's life. Yeah. <laughs> Happy, Our, birthday. Wait, what? What? Happy birthday, Jim. <laughs> Happy birthday, Jimmy. Wait, what? <laughs> hey. Sponsored by DiGiorno. Did get any pizza? Yeah. <laughs> Our first sponsor, everybody. We can't we can't say it was sponsored by DiGiorno because then they're never going to pay us for it. So D- DiGiorno sucks. They're terrible pizzas. Trust. Unless money tells us otherwise. Yeah. Mm. Um, but thank you for listening, everybody. Um, hope everyone's staying safe in their quarantine. Hey, you know what? Maybe we're lucky. And by the time this comes out, it's over. And we're doing this for no reason. I'm sure it will be. <laughs> uh, yeah sure, probably um but uh if you want to hit us up and get in contact with us and do some show suggestions or you know just uh regular correspondence you can hit us up at f and l podcast on the gmail or on the twitter yeah if you just need someone to talk to <laughs> yeah joe's available right into the dms yeah. <laughs> he's got 40 percent of his week ready to go just ready to um, do whatever <laughs> and so that. you can hit you can hit us up there if you uh you know you got some your quarantine fingers are ready to rate somebody some stars we got <laughs> one or five available for you so corn fingers. figure that figure that out we don't have to explain to you how to do that you're uh you're smart people you figured out how to push play you can figure out how to hit a star um but yeah besides that we appreciate you for listening We'll see you next week on another first and last goodbye.